Hi guys, I know it has been forever. I wanted to hop on here and create a video for you because I think it's super important that I kind of address a couple things right now and that you need tips and you need info. First off, the reason I've been missing for a while, life. Life happens, it happens a lot holidays and we got sick over the holidays. It was just a whole rigmarole and now we are getting ready for spring and we are getting started on preparing the homestead to create a new homestead. <laughs> so I just wanted to get on here, create a video for you that I think you all would be interested in with some tips and a little DIY because of a lot of stuff that's going on. Let me get comfy. And I didn't put, I'm spinning. I didn't put makeup on because that's also another reason why I don't do videos very frequently. It's because I hate putting makeup on. I hate putting my hair up. You don't come here to see me looking all pretty and crap. You come here to get tips. So this is what I'm going to do. A little update. If you want to see more of my content, I've actually begrudgingly signed up for TikTok. I've been doing short little videos on there that are tips and info that I think is awesome for preparedness, homesteading, and self-reliant living. So if you want to, you feel like you're tired of the drought and you want some of my content, go over there and it's just like on here, it's thriving through it all. You'll be able to see my beautiful face. I will be doing some more YouTube videos and maybe a little droughty because we're, like I said, working on getting the homestead ready. We've been starting the gardens. I got a load of chips the other day. We're gonna get a load of dirt. I will be filming it, but the videos probably won't be up until after we've got it set up because it's a lot of work. Another update. I actually have been working on a couple of ebooks and no, I know you guys have been begging me for the um, freeze dried meal cookbook. I put that on the back burner. I will be doing it, but right now I think it's more important to get all those people who want tips and help on getting prepared, prepared. I have an ebook, it's actually listed on my TikTok. You can also find it on my blog. It is all about getting started with a food storage pantry. So go check it out. And then I have a huge project that I've been working on since probably the summer. It's taking a long time because I have to write everything. Everything I do is original content. I create it myself, I use research from many sources, and then I kind of compile it for you guys. This thing is going to be huge. I am building a prepper binder and it's gonna have all kinds of stuff in it. It's going to have tips, it's going to have cheat sheets, it's going to have info on food preservation, it's gonna have info on herbalism, first aid, um, all kinds of different things. Home security, which I can't mention the types of things that'll be in there on YouTube. So this is what it's gonna look like. I kind of put a mock-up together, it's just the cover, and then you guys get your binder yourself, and then I will have, you know, sections so that you can divide it up into the tabs but it's going to have all kinds of stuff in it so if you want to suggest some tips or things that you'd like to see in that please email me or private message me whatever you can get a hold of me pigeon messenger pigeon I don't know if you don't know what the email is for our website it's mail at thriving through it all .com. so send me your tips let me know what you'd like to see in it it's going to be very bulky there's gonna be a lot and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm working from the smaller ebook to the binder and I'm also working on creating a video course that you can actually buy and have at your you know access whenever you need to and it's going to have videos on pressure canning and dehydrating smoking um gun safety I said the word hopefully it won't get in trouble um all kinds of things so I really hope you guys are patient with me and kind of understand that I'm trying to do 500 things at once. That's what's gonna be in the future. And then eh, I wanna talk to you real quick about the whole kind of end of this video is the DIY, food shortages and supply chain issues. I don't want to fear monger, but I'm letting you guys know from the things that I've been observing and seeing that it is very likely we've already been dealing with food shortages and supply chain issues for probably the last six months or longer. We're gonna see more of that. So now is the time if you see sales on certain foods, it's a good idea to go and kind of bulk up on that. That doesn't mean go out and freaking pile your cart full of toilet paper. That means just kind of a little at a time, every time you go grocery shopping, just bulk up on some items, find what you can. That's how we got to this whole DIY that I'm putting at the end of this video. I found a sale on five pound bags of potatoes for less than $2, so I bought two bags of them. Problem was, 
I planned on using them and then I got sick. So they kind of got a little mushy, grew some eyes, and so I repurposed them. This is another part of being self-reliant. You kind of make do with what you have and kind of make it work. So what I did was I did a video of me making a ginormous batch of mashed potatoes and part of it I put in um, my tin containers that I use for meal prep and then I freeze dried the rest. You'll see me making the mashed potatoes, freeze drying it, and then blending it up in my food processor and then putting it in my Mylar bag. So you will have DIY instant mashed potatoes that will last you for 25 years. So without further ado, no more chatting, let's get to that video. Just cutting up and peeling some really old potatoes that uh, have been sitting in my vegetable basket for a little too long. They're still semi-good. Some of them are a little squishy and have the growth, you know, the little stubs on them, the thighs. But don't throw these away. If they're super squishy, like, or green, definitely put them in your compost bin. They're not really edible. But if they're just a little squishy and there's no real visible, you know, gross marks like mold or anything or rotting, these can be used. Um, I don't recommend canning them because whenever you can something, you want it to be of the highest quality. So straight out the garden. But what I'm doing is I am peeling and cutting them up and then I'm going to boil them and make a massively large amount of mashed potatoes to put in uh, freezer containers for freezer meals for Aaron or to freeze dry them. And I think I'm gonna do a full load of freeze dried mashed potatoes. So now I've got all the potatoes in the water and this is salted water and I'm gonna turn on a simmer, not boil, because I want them to kind of cook all day because there is a crud load of potatoes in here. I think there's almost 10 pounds. So now the potatoes are done. I've only drained a portion of them because that's all and they're falling out. That's all I could fit in my colander. I still have like a ton in there. So what I'm gonna do is I put drained butter, some butter in here. We're gonna add some potatoes. So I added all my potatoes. So next we're gonna add salt and pepper and some, you can add either sour cream or milk, whatever you wanna add, or cream, whipping cream. They'll be seasoned and then I'm going to whip them up with my kitchen meat. Now the potatoes are nice and creamy and mashed. We're gonna transfer them to our freeze dry trays and our freezer meal style containers that I got. So now I have my harvest rate trays out and I also have assistant and we're gonna go ahead and add the mashed potatoes spread them out evenly on our for freezer right harvest rate trays then I'm going to place them in the deep freeze overnight so that I can freeze them I like to do that it just shortens my freeze dry time and it's the freeze the freezer is already running anyway so it saves on electricity so I've filled this and now you just fold down the little edges and the corners and of course in true uh, food storage style, you're going to want to write what's in it, there's mashed potatoes in it, what's in it and the date that you made it. And then you can store it in the freezer. Our mashed potatoes are almost done. We got about two minutes left. You hear that popping and cracking sound? That's just kind of the ice. And of course my freezer air is, my freeze dryer is down in the basement, so it's a little messy. <laughs> But I did manage to get a new oil pump and I am loving it. This is the Premier Pump. I don't have to change the oil as often and as you can tell, it's almost quieter than the freeze dryer itself. So in a few minutes, we're gonna pull those out. Our mashed potatoes are looking good. I don't feel any cold spots. Even though I had to restart this batch because the power went out during a snowstorm. I'm just gonna take chunks of this, put it in my food processor. And mind you, before I do this, anytime it's just like any other food cooking procedure or cooking process, you want to wash your hands or you can use gloves. So I'm just gonna break this up. Put my lid on, make sure it's on tight. process it until there's no more big chunks. So the next thing we need to do is take this out and put it in our bag. 
looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I use seven mil bags. I buy them from this place that has really reasonable price and they're the resealable kind. So like if you open it, you can still seal it again. Um, and it's gusseted, so it has like a pocket on the bottom so I can stand it up. So I've now got the powder in my bag and I'm going to seal it up. I did add the oxygen absorber first. I try and squeeze a little bit of air out. Kind of get that air out, then seal the seal. And then I'm going to seal it with my sealer. And I like to do two one, two, just to make it seal. And this won't suck up all the way because an oxygen absorber is meant to suck oxygen out and the atmosphere is comprised of more than just oxygen. And oxygen is the thing that's going to cause your food to go bad, not the other gases. So it might not suck up, you know what I mean, when it tightens when you have something in there, but that's okay. So now I've got a bag of mashed potatoes that I can use if this stays sealed, it will stay good for up to 25 years. So I took out a little bit of the mashed potato powder because I'm going to show you how it rehydrates. I am not going to boil some water. I'm just going to use some really hot water from the top. I'm just going to eyeball this because everybody has a different preference for their level of thickness for their mashed potatoes. I'm probably going to need to add some more. I'm just gonna go a little bit at a time. Now remember, I season these mashed potatoes before I put them in the freeze dryer. I use butter, milk, salt, and pepper. You can use whatever you want, but you just add, I think it's just gonna need a little more because it's still kind of powdery. Because you just wanna make sure that all the granules are getting rehydrated so there's a pocket right there. Oh my gosh, it smells like mashed potatoes. I think you could also put some like melted butter in here and that would be awesome. And just like when you get a package of freeze dried, you know, powdered mashed potatoes from instant mashed potatoes from the store, tastes like mashed potatoes. Tastes just like the mashed potatoes when I made them. My recommendation would be to fix these freeze dried mashed potatoes up just like you would instant mashed potatoes from the store. So I would add a little bit of uh, water and butter to a pan, boil it up, and just take them off the stove after they boil. Add your powdered potatoes until they're the right consistency you enjoy, and voila, mashed potatoes. But they're healthy and you know what they were made with. Plus, when you vacuum seal them, they last up to 25 years. I wanted to say thank you guys if you're still here. I know a lot of us will click off as soon as somebody starts rambling. Sorry, but it was a lot of important information I wanted to share with y'all. I am so grateful that you stuck it out with me even though through the drought of lack of videos, I promise I'll be doing more. But like I said, go on TikTok, follow us, you'll still get some content. So if you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscription button and like and share so that if we do put up another video within a month or two, you'll be notified. Thanks for hanging out guys.